oculoplastic and facial aesthetic procedures require a thorough knowledge of the neurovascular and bony anatomy of the face and periorbital region. This video demonstrates important periocular surface anatomy, soft tissue and bony landmarks on a simulated skull model, a human volunteer and live injection techniques to simplify the understanding of common periorbital nerve blocks. Nerve blocks in the periocular region can be divided into sensory or trigeminal nerve blocks and motor or facial nerve blocks. The branches of the trigeminal nerve originate from the gasserine ganglion located in the middle cranial fossa near the apex of the petrous part of temporal bone. The ophthalmic, maxillary and mandibular nerves proceed from the ganglion to innervate the face. The upper face is innervated by the ophthalmic division which supplies the orbit, upper eyelid and forehead complex. The mid face is innervated by the maxillary division which supplies the lower lid and cheek complex. The ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve has three branches the frontal, the nasociliary and lacrimal nerve. The frontal and lacrimal branches enter the orbit through the lateral part of the superior orbital fissure into the extraconal space of the orbit. Frontal nerve travels anteriorly along the orbital roof. In the mid-orbit, it divides into the supraorbital and supratrochlear nerves. The supraorbital nerve exits the orbital cavity through the supraorbital notch at the junction of medial third and lateral two-thirds of the superior orbital rim. After exiting the notch, the nerve traverses through the corrugator supercilii muscles and divides into lateral and medial branches. The lateral branch innervates the upper lid and lateral forehead, whereas the medial branch supplies the scalp. The supratrochlear nerve exits the orbit between the pulley of the superior oblique and the supraorbital foramen and curves up onto the forehead close to the bone. It innervates the medial third of the upper eyelid, the bridge of the nose and the medial forehead. Frontal nerve block can provide good anesthesia for common upper eyelid surgeries such as blepharoplasty, ptosis and entropion correction. To block the frontal nerve, a half-inch needle is passed just underneath the superior orbital rim in the mid-pupillary plane directed towards the orbital roof. The supraorbital nerve can be blocked medial to the supraorbital notch just within the orbital rim. The supratrochlear nerve can be blocked by first palpating the trochlea within the superomedial orbital rim. The needle tip is then placed 10 mm medial to the supraorbital notch just above the trochlea. The lacrimal nerve runs along the upper border of the lateral rectus, gives branches to the lacrimal gland and pierces the orbital septum to supply the skin over the lateral part of the upper eyelid. To anesthetize this area, the lacrimal nerve can be blocked by injection just outside the orbital rim above the frontozygomatic suture. The nasociliary nerve enters the orbit through the central part of the superior orbital fissure to enter the intraconal space. After giving a branch to the ciliary ganglion, the nasociliary nerve gives anterior ethmoidal nerve, posterior ethmoidal nerve and two end branches, the infratrochlear nerve and the dorsal nasal nerve. These branches are often blocked to perform an external dacryocystorhinostomy surgery under local anesthesia. Anterior ethmoidal nerve can be blocked by a transcaruncular approach. The 24-gauge needle pierces the caruncle and is directed posteriorly and medially towards the medial orbital wall just behind the posterior lacrimal crest. 
it gives internal branches which supply the anterior part of nasal septum and external nasal branches this nerve block numbs the part of the septum as well as skin over the anterolateral sides of the nose the infratrochlear nerve exits the orbit just below the trochlea and innervates the medial upper eyelid medial canthus medial nasal skin the conjunctiva and the lacrimal apparatus it is blocked by placing the half inch needle at a point midway between the medial canthal tendon and the trochlea along the superomedial orbital rim and direct it posteriorly the dorsal nasal nerve carries sensations from the cartilaginous nasal dorsum and tip it is blocked by palpating the inferior rim of the piriform aperture at the osseocartilaginous junction and place the needle just behind this point at the lateral wall of the nose lower eyelid procedures such as blepharoplasty ectropion and entropion correction are commonly performed under local anesthesia the infraorbital nerve and zygomatico facial nerve are blocked for the same the infraorbital foramen is palpated just medial to the mid pupillary line approximately a centimeter below the orbital rim the anesthetic is injected in a perpendicular direction staying above the periosteum a successful infraorbital nerve block will anesthetize the infraorbital cheek the lower palpebral area the lateral nasal area and the superior labial regions the zygomatico facial nerve exits through a foramen located in the anterolateral surface of zygoma just inferior to the orbital rim blocking this nerve will numb a triangular area from the lateral canthus and the malar region along the zygomatic arch this video summarizes the neurovascular surface anatomy of the periorbital region and the face we hope that this video has provided the new fight oculoplastic surgeon a clear view of the surgical implications of this surface anatomy we hope you enjoyed watching our video